This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Guess, go ahead and guess how many more Tomorrow Clubs could be started if the Tomorrow Clubs had more support. Go ahead, guess. Two, three, four. Wrong! As many as they receive support for, they will open. The opportunity is that huge. Don't forget Russia getting very dicey. I think Tomorrow Clubs, give or take, has about 80 clubs, maybe 60 in Russia. And now thanks to Vladimir Putin. Putin. Sounds like a energy drink or something doesn't oh, no, no. Who, uh, what, no no poutine is no. a canadian dish that's canadian french fries cheese curds gravy you can add bacon shallots Ooh, with the gravy part oh. why would you wreck a perfectly good french fry you know who's got pretty good french fries culver's went there sunday after church there's a new one in town they're starting to pop up there's a lot of five guys by the way in the twin cities not when i used to live there but now they've got them scattered all over the place in the twin cities culver's just opened here their french fries ain't bad i'm just saying french fries are pretty good with the barbecue sauce oh man that barbecue it's sweet barbecue if you like the tangy stuff the culver's won't be your cup of barbecue sauce but if you like it sweet oh i'm telling you with the french fries oh and then you get yourself that ice cream thing that but maybe it's dairy product for all i know that's a mystery food isn't it custard that's it oh Oh, there's is good that good eating there at the at the at the culver's at any rate was talking to the martys about this and the, the 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 tightening of the noose in russia is is almost an imminent threat. I think Putin says that he's doing it to keep Muslims from getting more terrorists cultivated in Russia. But he's so connected to the Russian Orthodox Church, and they have a stranglehold on the nation, and they want to keep it, and they will do anything to keep it. I've heard more than one story of some pretty nasty business in Eastern European countries from Orthodox priests because they're not so nuts about those Protestants being here. And so that is, that's a situation that we're just kind of watching in hopes that those tomorrow clubs can stay open. Nevertheless, in other Eastern European countries, Romania and Moldova, etc., if they've got the support, they open up a club, kids hear the gospel, families saved, entire villages transformed totally. You can support a Tomorrow Club, if and you can, at tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched, tomorrowclubs.org slash wretched more money the more clubs they open the more kids hear the gospel because i got to tell you at the eastern orthodox gospel it's not very cheery if they ever preach it at all denying penal substitutionary atonement eeks and that that won't put a smile on your face which is pretty true of an awful lot of eastern european people they do not walk around whistling a happy song Let us now share with you what I prepared weeks ago. Okay, that's just an outright lie. So here's the deal. I mentioned Alistair Begg's name about a half an hour ago. and So I went looking for the clip that I was talking about. The clip of him talking to pastors and saying, hey, be careful about being lazy in the ministry. I couldn't find that, but I did run into this we've become very familiar with preaching that pays scant attention to the bible is self-focused and is consequently only capable of making the most superficial impact upon the lives of the listeners this would be bad enough were it not for the fact that large sections of the church who listen to this kind of stuff are actually oblivious to the fact that what they're getting is a placebo rather than the real medicine alistair begg and that wasn't bad. That was at least sort of Scottish in the neighborhood. By the way, who won the Open in Scotland? Carnoustie, which some people call Carnasty. I couldn't find it. It was the weirdest thing. On, on Sunday, I was looking for the Open results. Couldn't find them, even at the Open website. Golf Channel. Couldn't find them. Monday. Can't find it. What's, did, some, did they get raptured? Did, turns out that only golfers are believers and the whole thing, the tournament got raptured. Could that possibly be it? At any rate, you find the winner, Joey? Stone. I'm sorry? B. Stone. Well, I don't know why you're telling me to become a rock. That Stone. makes no sense well, no. at all. Yes. Ah, that's Brandon completely Stone. different. Congratulations. 
Brandon Stone, Alistair Begg is sharing the different types of non-expository preachers. Instead of being a preacher, you have the cheerleader. He comes in. He's a well-meaning fellow. He has a peculiar need to be liked and accepted. <laughs> and whatever the context of his particular message, he is always going to be positively inspirational. A good Sunday for the cheerleader is one where his people laugh a lot, are affirmed and affirming, and they go away more self-assured than when they arrive. That would be the cheerleader. This is the conjurer preacher. Secondly, the conjurer. When we hear the congregation declaring, wasn't it amazing what he got out of that? Ah. We should not immediately assume that the news is good. Now, whenever the preacher refuses to do the hard work of discovering what the text actually means in its context, when he divorces discovery and application, just about anything can be conveyed from the Bible, and very often is. <laughs> now, and a good expositor should be able to wring a lot out of a text. Um, but if it's somebody who just wrung something out of thin air, you got yourself the conjurer. If a man does not have a solid conviction that the Word of God is powerful in and of itself, he's going to be forced to do something with it to try yep. and overcome the consumer resistance, which he feels is his task. Because he has a product, it's the Bible. He mm. has a consumer, it's the individual. Mm. And his ability is going to be seen in the way in which he can make the sale, you know. Mm. And I'd like to say those guys shouldn't be let out of seminary, but sadly, many don't go to seminary, and those that do go to complete stinkers. Did I mention I was just with Ken Ham last week? And I did a word association with him. And I said, the state of the local church, go. And, 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 and his, his outlook was not mm, optimistic. And he said, it's because of the seminaries. He said, everywhere I go, the number one question that I'm asked is, do you know of a good church nearby? Because we just need a good church nearby. Why? Because the seminaries are cranking out storytellers. Thirdly, the storyteller. This man has convinced himself that since everyone loves a good story, and since people tend to be less inclined to follow the exposition of the Bible, he'll just develop his gift for storytelling to the neglect of the hard work of biblical exposition. <laughs> Holy Campolo! <coughs> ah, I'm so sorry. I should have turned my microphone off when I was coughing like that. That just kind of got stuck in my throat. What about the entertainer? Instead of the preacher, he decides he's become an entertainer. Too often these days, you're invited to preach somewhere, and no thought is given to the preacher being part of the worshiping throng. Instead, they usher you into the green room, as they call it. There, you're invited to relax quotes backstage until it's time for you to quotes do your thing. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I can, I can get that to a degree at events, to a degree... But if the pastor is not even worshiping with the congregation, something is wrong. That's why when I go to a conference, I just love seeing other speakers out, on, just listening, taking it, worshiping, singing along, not just waiting to entertain. The systematizer. I'm referring here to the preacher who views the text of Scripture merely as the backdrop for a doctrinal lecture, who simply wants to take the Bible, use it to explain something that he just read in a fat book somewhere that really gave him a jazz. This is very different from the individual who, in the course of exegeting a passage, draws out the elements of Christian doctrine. Let me just translate that Scottish for you. I think it gives him a jazz is he got excited about it. So now what does he do? Well, i got to go figure out what my text is so I can use it as a springboard to dive into the depths of my own imaginations. The psychologist. Unfortunately, many contemporary pulpits are increasingly filled with pseudo-psychologists who have decided to become purveyors of helpful insights, most of which can be and often are delivered without reference to the Bible. And don't you fiddle around and lace it with a few Bible verses and make me think that you're teaching me the Bible. You're not teaching me the Bible. Oh, glad to see where Alistair stands on biblical counseling versus psychology. Naked preaching. I'm not talking about that sense of vulnerability that is an inevitable element of investing our lives in the teaching of the Bible, but rather the way in which the pulpit has become a place for pastors to share their faults and their yep. foibles, you know, That's a at trend. an attempt at authenticity. I want to let my congregation know how real I am, as if they needed to make that discovery. <laughs> the sermon is not usually the best place for that kind of sharing. We've got our hands full proclaiming the gospel, mm. pointing to Christ, telling the story, 
And I want to suggest that it's not advisable to use the time to point to ourselves and to use it to share our story. I hope that trend has disappeared because it has been around for far too long. Just blah, 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 spilling my guts. Oh, I'm, it's like Romans 7 every single Sunday. Exposition of Scripture is also undermined by a fascination with the so-called extra-biblical prophetic word. There are people saying, well, I, I, I know, Pastor, that you have a Bible, and I know you know a lot of verses in the Bible because you've studied it a lot, but I have a very pressing problem, and I wonder if you couldn't just give me a word directly from God, and please don't use the Bible. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard Alistair Begg laugh at what he just said in a sermon before. It's ridiculous. Pastors aren't oracles of God getting divine revelation just for you. They study the word, exposit it, and apply it just for you. This is Wretched Radio. Shout out to our gospel partners. It is your ongoing monthly support that allows us to do Wretched Radio every single day and provide the broadcast, the entire program, for free to anybody on iTunes, Android, or at our website. Thank you for being a gospel partner. If you enjoy or benefit from Wretched Radio, would you please consider joining those partners so that we can continue to preach the gospel, simply visit wretched.org.